In this video, we're talking about how to write complex numbers in polar form. And remember when we talk about complex numbers, we're talking about a number which is the sum or the difference of a real number and an imaginary number. So for example, this number here, one minus the square root of three times i, where i is the imaginary number, we have the real part, one, and we have this negative root three i, which is the imaginary part. So together, this is a complex number, and we wanna write this in polar form. The formula we're gonna use always to write a complex number in polar form is this formula here, z is equal to r times quantity cosine of theta plus i, the imaginary number, times sine of theta. We're always gonna leave i as it is, but we need to try to plug in values for r and theta. So r and theta are the values we're gonna need to find. And if we remember that a complex number is always given to us in the form alpha plus beta i, or sometimes you'll see it as a plus bi, then we can identify values in our complex number. So for example here, we can say that alpha is equal to one, and we can say that beta is equal to negative square root three. So now with values of alpha and beta, the formulas that we're gonna to use to find r and theta are these ones here. r is gonna be equal to the absolute value of c or the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared. And this comes directly from the Pythagorean theorem. If you plot this complex number in an argand plane where you have here two axes, but instead of the x and y axes in the argon plane, remember we call this the real axis and the imaginary axis. So if you plot this complex number in an argand plane, you see that you have a positive real value. So positive one is the real value. So maybe we'd come over here to positive one. And then negative square root three for the imaginary part. So since it's negative, we'd come down a distance of square root three along the imaginary axis. And maybe our point would be right about here in the argon plane. So that's how we would plot the complex number in the argand plane. And then this r value here is just going to be distance from the origin. So we're gonna be looking for this distance here from the origin, and in order to find that value of r, all we're gonna be doing is using the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna find here this value, we're gonna call this value alpha, or the value of the real part of the complex number, and this part here, beta or the imaginary part of the complex number and then this is a right triangle and this formula comes directly from the Pythagorean theorem that's how we're going to find r. We're also going to use tangent of theta to get the angle between this point and the real axis here and we're going to say tangent of theta is equal to beta divided by alpha or b over a. So then once we have r and theta we're going to be able to plug those into our formula for z. It's always helpful to plot the number in an argand plane because this is gonna tell us where to look on the unit circle for the value of theta that we need. Because this point is plotted in the fourth quadrant because we had a positive value for the real part and a negative value for the imaginary part, so we went positive along the real, negative along the imaginary, and we ended up in the fourth quadrant. That means we're gonna be looking in the fourth quadrant along the unit circle for the value of theta that we need. So let's go ahead and plug these values into our equation for r. So so for r, we're gonna get square root of alpha squared, so one squared, plus beta squared, so plus negative square root three squared. And when we simplify here, we're gonna get square root of one plus negative square root of three squared. The negative is gonna cancel, where negative times negative is a positive. Root three times root three is just three, so we're gonna get three. That's gonna be equal to the square root of four or two. So the value of r is going to be two. What about the value here for theta? Well, we're going to say tangent of theta is equal to beta over alpha. So negative square root of three over one, which is just going to be equal to negative square root three. Now, how do we find theta in this case? Because we have tangent theta equals negative root three. Well, what we're going to do is remember that tangent is the same thing as sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So sine over cosine is gonna be equal to negative square root three. Or if we look at our 
unit circle, what we're going to say is that the y value sine of theta divided by the x value cosine of theta of the coordinate point is going to be equal to negative square root 3. So what we're doing is we're looking for a coordinate point along the unit circle where when we divide the y value in the coordinate point by the x value in the coordinate point, the result is negative square root 3. And because I know that my complex number gets plotted in the fourth quadrant of the argon plane, I'm going to be looking in the fourth quadrant of the unit circle. So I'm going to be looking in this quadrant here for the coordinate point that I want that's going to give me this negative square root 3 value. The only value of theta that's going to give that to me is theta equals 5 pi over 3. Notice that the coordinate point at the angle 5 pi over 3 is 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. So if I say sine of theta, that's the y value, so negative square root 3 over 2, divided by cosine of theta, the x value, divided by 1 half, that's going to be the same thing as saying negative root 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 1. I'm going to be able to cancel my 2's and that's going to leave me with just negative root 3 over 1 or negative square root 3. So what I can say then is that the angle theta, theta is going to equal 5 pi over 3. Now with that in mind I can go ahead and write out my solution, my value here for z. So I'm going to say for this complex number 1 minus the square root of 3i, I'm going to say z is equal to r which we found to be 2. So 2 times cosine of theta or cosine of 5 pi over 3 plus i times sine theta or sine of 5 pi over 3 and this value here z is equal to the complex number 1 minus root 3i. We haven't changed the value at all we've just written it in polar form. So let's do one more quick example here. We've been given the complex number 3 plus 4i. So right away we know alpha is equal to 3 and beta is equal to 4. If we plot this in an argand plane and we have here the real and imaginary axis. So we go ahead and call this the real axis. We call this the imaginary axis. We have positive 3 for the real part, so we come out here to positive 3, and then we have positive 4 for the imaginary part, so we go positive along the real, positive along the imaginary, and maybe we're out at a point right about here. So we know we're going to be looking in the first quadrant of the unit circle for our value of theta, and the value of r is going to be the distance between this point and the origin. So to find r, we're going to say r is equal to the square root of alpha squared, or 3 squared, plus beta squared, or 4 squared. When I simplify, I'm going to get square root of 9 plus 16, or square root of 25, or 5. So I have r equals 5. I've got that value. Now I need a value for theta. So I'm just going to go ahead and say tangent of theta is going to be equal to beta over alpha, or 4 over 3. Now if I look at my unit circle, I know I'm going to be looking in the first quadrant, this quadrant here, for the value of theta that gives me 4 over 3. So I would be looking to divide the y value in the coordinate point by the x value in the coordinate point, sine over cosine or tangent, to give me 4 thirds. But unfortunately, none of these three points are going to give me 4 thirds, so I actually can't simplify tangent of 4 thirds at all, and I just have to leave it tangent of theta is equal to 4 thirds, and that's okay. All I need to do is solve for theta as theta is equal to arctan or tan to the negative 1 of 4 thirds. So that'll be my value there for theta. So now I just need to plug the values for r and theta into my formula here for z to write this complex number in polar form. And I'm going to go ahead and get z is going to be equal to my value for r, which in this case is 5, times cosine of theta. So I'm going to say cosine theta is tangent to the negative 1 of 4 thirds, or inverse tangent function, plus i sine theta. So I'm going to say plus i sine of tangent to negative 1 4 thirds and that's going to give me then my complex number written in polar form.